Okay, for Penny's husband. Past life for Penny's husband. Okay, so immediately what's coming through is like, is this somebody that's like Viking person, Viking battler? And immediately it's like, no, there's this gruffness of spirit there. It's, um, we're in the land of Vikings that are not Vikings. I think we're in a realm that's a little bit different than this. This is people that hung out and did things. It's somewhere in the land lost between Vikings and like gnomes or fairies is this group. So it's this very individual type of, clansmen this very individual type of tribe we've got kidnapped here and planner then we have somebody that is the slave so i don't know if he was or if if they would hijack other tribes and incorporate them is what i'm getting this is somebody that hijacks this is like um these are the words on these cards and they're really abrupt, but I don't think it's quite as abrupt as that. I think it's just a cultural takeover. It feels more cultural like that. You would, um, it's like, it's the, I don't know if that's the right word, if it's the Picts or who, I don't know who it was. Maybe it's the Celts that weren't actually in the Celtic region, the Celts that went down in the Euros a little deeper. I'm not sure. Let me look a little further. I need to snoop just a minute and see. Because I feel like, um, this is about conquering and conquest more than anything else. Oh yeah, this, uh, Penny, your husband was very much in the conquering mode and he would um, take out old things. It's like, um, he wasn't Attila the Hun, but he could do the work if he needed to in an Attila the Hun thing, he probably could have. Because he was going in with full-on warrior, ready, ready, ready. And yeah, there's damage, but it, in, in historic times, that didn't matter. They weren't paying attention to how this would affect, affect, affect. This was like, just conquer, conquer, conquer. And some of the destruction that was wrought from that was very tricky. So this is um, a tricky thing. There's, there's jealousies and rivalries. And this is um, ambition coming in kind of heavily here. This guy wanted to move up the ranks in whatever this was. This is this is ambition in rank, in um, warrior, soldier, conqueror energy. Now, this feels like, um, I don't know my rankings in military, like, like there would be like maybe the captain or the commander or whatever, and then there would be somebody that would be advisor, and then there would be a few others that are about on that same level, about like that. I don't even know where we're at right now. Yeah. Working through the brambles, sorting through the brambles was a gift that he had and he would do it with determination. It didn't matter if he got wounded or injured or cut or whatever. He would still work through it. He was really steady, reliable. He was really masterful at what he did. He created good plans. He'd use whatever resources that he had available. He would use them and fuse things together. He's like a fusion... I was going to say a fusion king. I don't think he was actually a king, but he knew how to fuse things. So he'd tear it up and then a little bit help to make things coalesce right here. Tear it up, make it coalesce, and conquer it for whatever state. King of swords. He was a battler for sure. Battler for sure. No getting around that. No getting around that. He would fight the battles. He'd go in there. He, he would fight the battles. Battle, conquer, conquer coalesce battle conquer coalesce he was like um somebody that would be sent out to get the job done if somebody needed the job done he was the guy to go to and then he would help get things rebuilt regrouped together before he would go to his next mission assignment it was taking a toll on him he remembered his days before it was just all work 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 like this he remembers this and he remembers it's taking a toll on him to be this driven, to be this on task and do and do and do and do. Is he more than just a soldier? He's asking himself this frequently and he's getting a little tired. He's He doesn't have a problem doing the work, but it's taking a toll on his soul. 
and it's costly to him. He didn't anticipate that. And it's if there's um there's wealth and reward and richness in what he's doing, but he can't continue doing this. He wants to be more than just the fighter that comes naturally. It, and it's really um, the history of the battles is taking a toll. There's celebrations, there's judgments that he sees from the distance, people happy from the distance. He sees them and he sees them and he's not there. He's away from where he wants to be. This could be during the, doing, during the Crusades. He could be somebody that returned from the Crusades, but some of his fellows didn't. And he got tired of doing this Crusade, Crusade, Crusade. Yes, we're getting the Page of Swords. He was a young boy when he started, but he's had to become... In order to survive, he's had to become a little bit more brutal, more brutal, more brutal. And he misses the boy. We see very clearly here and here. Honey, can you show these? Here and here. We see the boy. We see the man. And we see that um, there's the boy. when He's a boy when he starts the Crusades. And then here he is as this king of swords coming in next. Here, this one. This one. He became the man that was the fighting king. Fight, 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 fight. Wow, it was difficult. It was difficult, but it was a matter of survival. And fate gave him the skills to be, be nimble and quick and excellent at what he did. In conquering, conquering, conquering. He doesn't know how to just chill, to be calm. He, he, was, he was the man they would go to. He was worth the price to get him to handle the battle, to get things settled, to help whoever it was. He wants something a little slower. He wants something slowed down. He wants his own patch of grass for himself. He wants his own land, his own place to be. He wants to retire. He dreams of retiring, but does he get to? Oh, not so yet, not so yet. In his mind, he has how it should be. In his mind, he has this idea of a house, a place, a sense of settled, a sense of being settled down. And yet he can't stop yet. Still, the emperor has him fighting. Still, he has to battle, battle, battle. He's in the chariot because he's such a good warrior. Still, they send him in when the desire, the drive, the ambition to push forward is there. And he's sick of it. He's sick to death of it. It's like it's weighing heavy on him as if he's ha as suddenly uh, his maybe his armor or whatever he's wearing in the battle feels heavier. He's starting to get slower. He thinks he might die before he gets what he wants, which is just he's fighting so he can buy this place of his own, this space of his own freedom. There comes a day that he damn near dies. Then he is left behind. We've got the Ten of Swords, and this is multiple, multiple wounds. He's left on the field. He's not dead. And then the uh, the enemy, so to speak, comes in. They gather him up. They take him. person who gets him off the battle is not the enemy is not militant or military or a bad anything at all it just feels like a regular person in this foreign country is taking care of him helping heal him actually quite quite amazing the the person that finds him feels like um takes him back to the house this feels like um a young person that has their own house, somebody that has perhaps a little more affluence but isn't invested in this fight, fight, fight. They're just pretty much run of the mill, but they aren't, they aren't in battle. They must have had position in society well enough that they wouldn't have to battle, but they take them back and it worries, it worries the household completely. And there's a daughter there that is very, very, in tune spiritually and she she can see that 
this man is battle weary, that he's not going to kill them all in their sleep. She can see that he's he's needing some care. He's needing some time to heal, repair. And there needs to be patience for this. And she, she talks, some of the family is apprehensive, and she talks that part of the family into letting him just kind of heal there and to keep cover, really keep cover. Why? Why would she risk this? She feels like she can't send him back and she she can't send him back to the battlefield. She can't just leave him to die. They can't do anything. They keep him there kind of on the down low. And he's not necessarily a servant to them or a prisoner. He's just a person. It's not so much the gilded cage at all. She says, hey, go when you want to go, come when you want to come. It's like, you can be here with us. You're not trapped here. You're not stuck here. But you can be among us. You can heal here. And he's like, he can't believe it. He, he just is like dumbfounded because he's gotten so used to battle, battle, war, war, culture, culture, leave, battle, battle, war, war, culture, culture. He, he can't believe it. He goes for walks. He sets up stacks of rocks and he goes and he thinks and he returns in the evening. He's building his strength back. He's trying to think about his life choices, his battle. He's wondering what's going on. He's missing, he's missing the battle to some degree because it's what he's used to, but he doesn't know if he wants to give up whatever is comfortable here. This happens to him twice. happens to him twice why does it happen to him twice it's happened somewhat in a dream that he thought he would get this place to be but now he's got the dream but it's in a different land now he is he's on the different soil he's there for quite some time it seems like the man that took him in and the family that took him in, he's been there for many years. How many years? Maybe like three and a half, four years, four years. Are we getting four years? He's really become one of them in their culture. Four years and he's very at peace. He's finally got some peace. How very strange. Now, does he miss the battle again? Because twice that came in. Twice. He's got to figure out where is his heart devoted. Twice that came in. Look again, look again. He does miss his homeland. He does want to go back to his homeland. He feels like he would have freedom there, but he feels like also that's pie in the sky. And um, I think everybody from his home would think he's dead. They wonder what happened to him. They think he's dead. Can he go back to his homeland or does he not? He does not. He wants the peace more than he wants the battle and wants to go back. He, he No, he does not want to. For four years, he's had peace, peace, peace instead of war. Why would he possibly want to go back? It would feel like drowning to him. Is he going to go back, though? There comes a shift in the atmosphere and whatever the climate is. And I'm not talking geography. I'm talking... The, the warring countries have finally quit warring. Everything has started again. Everything has started fresh. He could go back home. He could have peace. There is healing to be done, but he would have to travel and leave something. He hates this choice. He feels like this is an impossible choice to win. He feels like it's impossible. And his mind is playing over things, over things, over things. Who would he see? How would he deal? The culture... 
He's he's gone very differently from what his culture was originally. How would he possibly go back? It almost feels like a betrayal to go back home, although he longs for it. There's something that is there that is pulling him, pulling him, pulling him back, and he has to go back. He has to return. There's something about his family banners, his family of origin, his um, lineage is pulling him home. Something about that is pulling him home. It's, it's just as risky to go home as it is to stay. I don't, he's, he's really having a tough time weighing his options. I think he feels like if, it, it, it feels like if he goes back, he will lose all the ground of peacefulness and he will become that older version of self that he doesn't want to be. And it, how can he not go back though? He goes back. He goes his own way for a while. He has to go think it out, think it out. He doesn't want to leave behind who's there, especially the peaceful daughter. I think he likes the peaceful daughter. The peaceful daughter says, you need to do what you need to do. You need to go on your path, do what you need to do. And if fate returns you to me, then fate returns you to me. If not, then if you have more fights to fight, then you need to go and you're going to be there for a reason. They really are very, very close friends. I don't know if they are actually lovers or romantically involved or not yet. I haven't asked that. I'll ask in a minute. But here, the burden of returning to the battle is clear. The end of this battle time, he thought it was done. He has to return, and he returns from the Crusades. Many, many don't. And she doesn't come back with him. So he's still wounded from the whole thing. He's given the prize that he was promised for the battles that he fought. People are thrilled that he's still alive, that he still exists. But now he's putting on this role, this facade of who he used to be. And fate took him elsewhere. Fate took him outside of his sphere, outside of his own ambition. Outside of where he thought he would find home, he found home. So what does he do? He goes back. He goes back to the foreign land. He goes back for her. I don't think they were lovers. I think they were profound, profound, profound good friends. I think that he never felt like he could be um, romantically with her in this particular life. But he can't leave her behind. He feels like there's something amiss. He goes back for her. It takes quite a bit of travel to go and get her. And he wants to get her and bring her back and set her up. She does leave with him. There is a soul contract that's really deep in here. They, they are not lovers. She, he goes back for her for the love of her. But it's almost like because she was so innocent and so having such strong belief in peace he learned to be peaceful so he looks after her more like a sibling more like a little sister or a big sister would look after a little uh, he she's younger more like a little sister more like a big brother or parent to a little sister he goes back after her and brings her back to where it is over here lets her see his land she's willing to do that she's willing to travel there I don't think this is the end of their story. I just think this is the roles that they chose to play in this life. She wasn't really raised with the same parents and the same energies that he was. 
However, she taught him a huge amount about peace and putting the battle down and having quiet and having calm and having stillness. I think they continue in another life further on down the track, and I think they do continue in different roles, not as siblings. It's down the track, down the track. It's like one is overlapping the other here. Give me a minute. All this life where he's the warrior battler, all this life where he's the warrior battler, He's battled, 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 and she gets peace and quiet, and she gets to do things from a different thing, and she's all right with it. All of that is very much um, friendship, a deep, deep friendship and a respect for each other. But he does go into some of his older battler ego mode, and she's not thrilled to see that a little bit. I mean, he's back in his home society. He doesn't go after bloodthirsty war anymore. No, but it, it's not the same as what it was. It feels like there's a contract after here where they will come back and they'll return. If they're to return to each other in another way, in another role, that they will. Yeah, there's a promise made. There's a promise made by a bridge and a river that says if there is another place in time, then we, then it, it's not if there is. It's if we were in that other place in time. They're not. They can't be in both worlds. Either world doesn't suit the other quite so well. They need to be in the in the same world. She's going to want to go back to her space. Yeah. There, there's a contract made that there will be a balance and a reckoning for this. There she shows again. When she's older, when she's had more time, when they come when they can come together on equal footing. Not, not where one is disadvantaged over the other, no. They both come in equal footing and they both come in with an equal level of peace, having learned the lessons. She's got a few more lessons to do that are different, that need to be caught up so she can catch up with a battler. She's got battle lessons still to do. And then she can make a choice that's a right choice, a, a, a fair choice to make. Not an imposition, not a put on this, not a somebody owing a debt of gratitude or a debt of protector or an no then then it could be the swords are down what's the rest of that sorry yeah that's where it is that's the wish that they can come swords down where they both are in the in the land in the life as equal on the same equal ground that's what they come in as that's that's where they will come in for the next significant set of lessons and what the relationship is I'm not allowed to go further. I'm getting stop, stop. That's where I'm getting. That's complete. Wow. Holy cow. That's complete. Penny, that's quite the thing. Your husband was uh, driven, really, really driven, and has seen some hard things in a past life, really, really hard things. Um, there is frequently carryover from one life to another. So not all the lessons will be there, but there will be portions of life or portions of lessons to catch up on sometimes. So if you do feel out of sync, you'll know. If you feel perfectly in sync, you'll know. If if this is still something where the battle lessons are being learned, you guys will know. On one level or another, you'll know. But it feels like it is time to put down the swords for whatever reason. It feels like your battle lessons came in, you didn't have so many of them. But it feels like this is saying put down the swords. And I don't know that you were her in this life, but the put down the swords message comes through. I don't know that you were her in this life or not. I just know this is something he learned, he experienced, and this is how she came in. And we did this about him. I didn't put in the thread of whether this was you or whether you were traveling together because this is what came through. So that's where we leave it. There's definitely purpose of lessons for you in the lives that you are in now. What they are, I don't know beyond this, other than peace is important. A truce is what's being called for. On this card for you in your relationship, there needs to be a truce. So put down the swords and get in touch with the emotions again. Get the spiritual truth out of what it is. And it's, it's no more war. That's what we got. That's complete. All right. Holy smokes.